then you'll get interrupted more than somebody who hasn't or doesn't care about that stuff and is just interested in completing their task in one go. Some people like to multitask, some people like to do, um, to do a, a single task at a time. So therefore, you, you know, those preferences also might affect the responses. So it has to be a laboratory, laboratory task really to make it comparable. Um, we've also got um, a thing called consulting. So card sorting represents an order of some, an order of, the, of um, importance, or an order of more like, or something more likely. Okay? So generally, you've got a set of cards, and all those cards are certain, might be images of a, images of a, um, a user interface. It might be scenarios, it might be card equations, it could be anything. Okay? And what you do is sort those cards into a specific order based on what your are. Uh, very specific to look at the spe a specific look and feel, a specific widget, a specific arrangement. Okay. And that way we can understand better how, you know, whether we get lots of people sorting these cards into the same order. Okay. Well, how does this relate to other kinds of work that we've also looked at? The first word for the for the thing we were looking at before is called the party. No, priority, sorry. Priority poker. Who remembers priority poker? Priority poker. Yeah, so that's in the first set of that's in your hat racks, notes. Okay? Okay, and then triarity felicitation understands differences which are not immediately obvious. Okay, so triarity felicitation means that we get information, but let's try it. Three. So it's in steps of three. So we can sort the cards into groups of three, or we can sort them three times so that we can have different kinds of outcomes. Now, analytics. These, both of these analytics, and you can find the papers in the notes, are both um, Google analytics. So pulse and heart are both the kind of metrics that you can get. So first of all, what, what can you notice about these two specific things? Anything about the metrics there? So the first one got page views, uptime, latency, seven day active users, and earnings. And then we've got, yes? Okay, 
So here is a set of Google Analytics. I think you've seen something like this on the analytics dashboards for Google uh, before. So you can see Google Analytics, you have usage, you have number of users in the overview. And you can get a fairly good, a reasonable, not perfect, but a reasonable idea of the kind of analytics that we'd expect to get back from generally, obviously, web pages or web applications. But this kind of stuff you can collect for your own applications. If you've got an application that's standalone, it's not online, it's a standard app on a, on a, um, on a uh, mobile device, say, as long as it's connected, you can still harvest this information. Because you can understand how much it crashes, you can understand how much it's used, you can understand how much it sits in memory, you can understand all that stuff. Engagement and happiness, part metrics, then you might want to do more, you might want to understand that in a, bit, in a different way. So you might want to think to yourself, well, how would I make, okay, so how would I measure the heart metrics, say happiness or uh, engagement, adoption, retention, tasks, etc. So I present, I mean in reality we can understand adoption because of the, of the mobile app, because we can see how many times it's downloaded from App Store or whatever. We can see retention because if we get no figures back from it, we know that they are, it might be on their system, but they've not really retained use of it. Okay? Tasks etc. We can understand that by measuring the outcome that you can get ready for that. What about happiness and engagement? These are the two nitty gritty ones. Happiness and engagement. Yeah? You sort of gamification to know how good your engagement is or how you keep achieving the people to get So you could use gamification to understand how uh, engagement is. How, what, what would be a gamification technique that you might use? Achievements. Achievements, okay, yeah. Anything else? Leaderboards, yeah? I, I was going to say about engagement just because I have studied uh, if you graph functionality that's being used by the users. In other words, if users interact with everything that's on the table. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Any more? Happiness engagement? Simple things. Okay, well, you might want to understand how many times that this has been tweeted. How many times? On a mobile device, if you put the like button, does it connect to Facebook and go, oh, I'm doing this, I like this, I'm into this? How many times do you share it, this kind of stuff with your friends? That kind of thing. So if you're sharing it, it's an implicit recommendation that you like it. So how many times, how many shares does it get? How many likes does it get? Etc. etc. You can understand this <coughs> for a 10% like rate on the apps. Or on retention. To understand how people are happy, how, how happy people are with their experience of what they're doing. Okay. So, in analytics, there's these three major points. Experience monitoring, which is a qualitative representation of a single session. So Google do experience monitoring by changing the look and feel of their search, say, but for a random set of users for a, for a small time. So they might use a different Google search page for 10 minutes um, on a particular day and then on different days. And you might hit the Google search page, which is slightly changed, and then they'll sit there, they'll be looking at those results that they're getting back from it. Only for 10 minutes, so it doesn't break everything, and not to every user, but still in 10 minutes they can get a way big enough um, set of people, set of users to give you good, accurate, specific sample size. Okay? Just for that session. Is it quicker? Is it presented quicker? To download it as of the, of the, of the data you've got there. So that's how they do it. So you need to think, how can you do this? A qualitative representation of the session. And my share goals, quality measures such as awareness, branding, well, mind share means exactly that, sharing with others. Okay, so you need to give people the ability to share, the ability to tweet simply, to, to make it, oh, I'm using this and it's great. I'm using this bit of, you know, this bit of software and it's real, blah, blah, blah. Download it now to all my friends. Okay, all that. Customer support, responsive and customer satisfaction evaluation. Okay, that's one big thing. So responsiveness to inquiries. 
Why does everybody have this battle tap still? Even though it's even though play only gives you 15 minutes to get your money back, Apple will give you no chance at all. So if you buy an app and you want to get you want to laugh to your screen, you want to get a refund, you can't do it. You can't, can, has anybody ever got in contact with Apple customer support? Well, I've tried many times, it's very difficult. What about Amazon customer support that's that's via the the phone, you know, by the phone lines. Yeah? So a few people, I'm sorry. <laughs> how, did you, how long did it take you to get there? To get the... Seconds, that's very quick. Yeah, Amazon is amazing. Yeah? And nice to know. Okay, cool. Where did you get that from? It works. Ah. They call me. I typed my web on for it. Oh, I haven't got that number. Unless it came up when they rang me. Yeah. Okay. So, you might say, so that's the, that might be the way to go. Or, you know, you type your number in and they, they call you. Why is that a good thing? I think it's a good thing. Why is it a good thing, thing for them? Self-conscious their opinion, so in general they might be giving you crap answers because you know they don't want to upset you, especially if it's your work. However, the way around that is to say this isn't my work, even if it is, this isn't my work, I don't care about this at all. Just tell me what you think about it. You know, good or bad, it doesn't matter to me. Um that's probably quite vocalizing, but kind of changing the way the about it in a different way. I think it's a good thing. I might actually agree. They might think that's a good thing because if they're thinking about their use, then they might come up with things that are could be improvements because that's one of the things that's allowed. You can say, oh, it's better if this was like this because I'm having difficulty doing this. But you, you think you want to observe it as close to its normal use as possible? Yeah, yeah. So this might not be as good for normal use. This might be good for alpha. 
you know, they, they want to try and get some information out about usage, but maybe it's more about what improvements might be made, and if they're just, if they're even looking at improvements, oh, well, maybe that's good, that's, yeah, so they, that's a good thing, yeah. You know you said about, oh, they may not want to upset you, but say you work rubbish, but yeah. because they know you're sort of observant, they may think, well, you want me to sort of point out some bad things, so it might be sort of overly critical, if so well, they don't like this when that's not really an issue in reality. Yeah, yeah, and that's true, so the more people you get through, the more likely you are to mitigate from that, because they might, they're all unlikely to pick the same thing to say it's not good if they're making it up. Um, because they, they feel a, a pressure to give you critical feedback. Um, so the more people, the better as we look. You know, as we look. Okay. <clears throat> so then we have cognitive evaluation and participatory design. So really this came about because users were not involved in the design process as we already know. Okay? It was generally software engineers Building code, building software, etc. What? No? I thought that was an answer to a question. I just couldn't get it. No? Um, yeah, so generally, participation on public violation is where the user is involved in the design process. So, generally, you build a piece of software that would be built, and that was it. You either use it. And it became a problem because obviously users weren't getting the kind of outcomes that they wanted, and businesses weren't getting the kind of outcomes they wanted because they were difficult interfaces to use. So we came up with this idea of um, cognitive evaluation or participatory design where users are right there in the forefront of the design. You'll see this a lot in agile development, right? In agile development, it's perfectly okay to have somebody who's not a coder in your development. The stuff that Fox were, Thoughtworks were talking about was very much to do with this cooperative evaluation linked to participatory design. The cooperative evaluation doesn't say that you're the experimenter, it doesn't say that you're the person who, and so there's no experimental bias in that way, but it's not saying that you are in control, it's saying that you and the people you're working with evaluate it to the person buy in. Okay. So their evaluation is about buying into the system. So you can think of it as pair programming but with users, in a way. So you're there, and you're talking with users in the evaluation, and that evaluation might turn into something, especially with Agile, it might turn into something that's actually creation. It might go from evaluation to, well, this ought to change, then you can change it and do it again. Okay? In these kind of uh, iterative groups. <coughs> that's where I cooperate co-operative evaluation comes from. Um, survey questionnaires. Um, surveys and questionnaires. So, surveys and questionnaires, what do we think, what do we know about surveys and questionnaires? What do we know about choosing the language? Thank you. 
want this to be done. You need to vary the order of questions. All questions need to be varied. The order needs to be varied so that you haven't got a bias. Um, also, what about data? What about the, the top data types that we were talking about with questions? Here we've got data types where it says strongly disagree, and then it goes agree, strongly disagree, um, you know, agree and strongly agree, right? Or neutral on this particular example. So the government should be responding on embryonic stem cell research, strongly disagree. And then you'll say, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. What kind of data type is this? Scale, but it's what kind? Strong, yeah, but it's less. I'm not sure if it's nominal or Okay, so that's the difference. It could also be categorical. So it's, that's kind of nominal. So, so, so that's a big thing as well. In questionnaire data, some people will say, oh, it's all more, because that's nicer, because you've got kind of a scale of 1 through 5 ish. But it's actually using language. So therefore, they say, no, it's not. It's not. And if that's the case, then that means that you've got different sets, and different sets of statistical tests you can use, and different levels of confidence that you can use. So if it's nominal or categorical, you've got less, you can be less confident tests than if it's all in all the ratio, the ratio of the yeah. So you have to think about that in, in the kind of questions that you're asking to. Okay, now, in 2012, there was the great measurement debacle. The great measurement debacle was that uh, previous week I'd done the standard, this is the, this is the nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio scale, and then everything was fine. And then when we went to the exams, everybody said, oh, I didn't know what those types and scales were. What are you thinking about? They were all silent, a bit like today. So now, I go back the second week, 2013 and 2014, and say, right, see these scales? These scales. Do we know what these scales mean? If you do not know what these scales mean, Scales are, put your hands up. If you don't know what the scales are, put your hands up. See, hands balancing. So, most of you are just still like, you know, dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why do scales matter? Why do, they, why do these types matter? What does it affect? I've said it like five minutes ago. What does it affect? That's why it matters. And it affects our confidence in the kind of analysis we can do. So if somebody says this is a statistic and this is what it's saying, well what data were they using? How did they get that information? Because you can't be as confident in some as in others. It's not the same playing field. So you'll see that they'll be very very specific in certain um, certain domains. Uh, psychology, social science and, and uh, medicine are very specific about the kinds of tests they've used, the kinds of data they've collected. It's just a big long string of what they're going to do. Okay? Because they need, they need to convey that information quite quickly. Nominal scale just denotes identity. So it might be something like yes, no. It's also called a category. A category. Gain to solicit what information 
It's not just you pick something. Okay? There's lots of this. Uh, there's lots, lots of work on this in other domains. Okay. So, board will say, you know, it's identity and magnitude, so you can see that if you've got to start from 1 through 5, then 5 should be more than 1. So if we agree, 4, 5, if we strongly agree, 5 should be the strongest agreement. Okay. <coughs> now sometimes you'll have 2, 0, 2, 1, 0 um, on each side of the 0, so it'll be, sorry, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, because the magnitude of the 2s are the same as the magnitude of the 1s. Okay? Not the same as the magnitude of the 1s. Magnitude of the 2s are the same. Magnitude of the 1s are the same. The zero is obviously 0. Okay? So that's a bipolar scale. However, you can have 1 through 5, 2. So on some, some questionnaires you'll see 1 through 5. Now 1 through 5, it must mean that 5 has greater magnitude. Okay? If it doesn't have greater magnitude, then it's actually just nominal. And that's why ordinal, nominal, and categorical, that's why there's a big debate about which should be given, which should be used. Because it gives you different results in the data. Okay. Interval scale denotes identity and magnitude that has the benefit of equal intervals. So, the way to test this is can you times the, um, can you times any of those numbers and it comes out with something? So if I times, on the ordinal scale, if I say 2 times 3, because 3 is the, you know, we've got, we've got an ordinal scale of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I say, can we say, does 2 times 5 mean anything? No. Because it's just a scale. It doesn't mean anything. You can't do it. Does 2 times yes mean anything? Because it's a nominal scale. But on the interval scale, equal intervals, then you would expect 2 times 5 to equal 10. And ratio scale is the same, but it has a true zero point. So not just one that you've made up because it's a nice polar scale. It's a true zero point that means something. Below it is, you don't have 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. You have minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. It's a true zero point. So, that being the case, yes? Uh, what, would you, what would you use a ratio scale? Ratio scales would be used, well, generally, if you can, if you can find a, a, a ratio scale to use, you should use it. So it's used, for instance, some physical will use ratio scales. So it does, because um, it's a scale that they can disagree and identify. So generally, you might use it for it's a task completion time. So you want task completion time, collect task completion time, so you the true zero. Uh, it's got uh, the it's got uh, magnitude, um, then you're good to go. The scale's right. So generally, you're using that kind of that kind of um, uh, task completion time, then it means that you're able to do far accurate, far more accurate, and confident analysis of the data set. Why would um, task completion time cover zero or not apply if you're going to ask me zero? Okay, then. Um, X Y coordinates on our mouse. Yeah. So you might have that way you're looking at X Y coordinates and the speed that goes with that. Yeah. I mean you could also say that task completion time maybe not on the mouse, but on a pointing device, just depends because if you're pressing that what's the task completion time? So when the computer hits the hits the screen the touch screen, you could argue that's zero. And if you're using the mouse it takes longer. So the hybrid methods are the same for evaluation <coughs> as, as for, as for um, elicitation. So we remember that we get we can use different kinds of methods to select, to, to elicit different kinds of information so that we're not biased. Here we can do the evaluation the same way. We might want to use uh, different kinds of evaluation. So we might want to use a questionnaire coupled with think aloud, coupled with an interview, say. Or we might want to do some longitudinal measurement coupled with an interview to make sure the measurement is correct. Yeah? Okay. Tools of trade, we 